Hi, this is Scott Garibay. Today we're going to talk about Andrew Yang and we're going to talk about five lessons from chess that Andrew Yang can use, can leverage in the 2020 U.S. presidential primary Democrat race to win. All right, let's get it. All right, so basically, oh, before I go any further, um, in case you noticed, I do have a new hat. Or this is actually, it's an old hat, but I'm wearing it now because it's getting cold. Uh, this is my blue hat. It's from Twin Shadow. It's signed by Twin Shadow. He's one of my favorite artists. If you never checked him out, check him out. I'm wearing it now because it's a blue hat, right? And if you ain't noticed, blue hats are getting a new meaning. And I'm all for the emergence of new meaning blue hats, right? All right. If you're not familiar with that, uh, check it out. Uh, like just Google it. You'll figure it out. All right. So let's talk about chess. All right. Uh, I, I love chess. And one of the reasons why I love chess is I love politics. And there is absolutely rock-solid analogies, uh, like relationships between chess and politics, okay? Now, chess perfectly uh, perfectly mirrors the struggles that politicians and people who are trying to be politicians uh, deal with when they go into the political arena, right? So one, you only have a set number of resources, okay? Uh, And basically, guess what? You could start a game without all your resources, right? It's very clear. Andrew Yang started this chess match. Biden had a full set of uh, pieces, and Andrew Yang was missing like three pawns, a uh, uh, you know, probably a queen and a bishop, right? Like, you know, he didn't get he didn't get all the resources Biden had, right? But you still gotta be you still gotta beat your opponent, and there's ways to do it, all right? All right. Uh, the other thing is time. You only have so much time. Uh, for space and time is a big thing in chess, right? You have to have your positions in a position of, you have to have your pieces in a position of force. You have to be moving them forward, right? Uh, and taking space on the board. And you and every move you make, you have limited time to accomplish your goal, which is to checkmate uh, your opponent, okay? All right. So let me, I'm, I get five lessons that I have learned from chess, from playing a ton of chess well over a thousand games of chess that I'm going to put right here for Andrew Yang and his team to to use to leverage this wisdom to win the 2020 U.S. presidential Democrat primary race. All right. I have a mnemonic that's going to help me uh, remember all five of the lessons. All right. The Queen of England she is on a basketball court and she's shooting a perfect three-pointer. But oh no, a boule uh, lifts up uh, the Winklevosses and they spear the basketball with forks just as it's about to go into the basket. All right, let's do this. Queen, non-retribution queen lesson. All right, I found out something terrible about myself, and I think Andrew Yang needs to determine if this is true or untrue about himself. I This is one of the most disturbing things I ever found about myself in chess, right? And by the way, chess is a huge analogy for life, too, uh, in case you ain't got that right. Uh, okay. So I found out that when I lose my queen in a non-retribution queen loss, I lose my queen and I do not take my opponent's queen within the next turn, right? Um, That's called a non-retribution queen loss. You lose your queen. You're losing nine points of material, right? Uh, By the way, the rooks and the bishops. uh, The rooks are worth five and the bishops and the knights are worth three apiece and the uh, pawns are worth one right? So you're using nine points of material and you're getting zero back. Non-retribution queen loss almost always in chess means a game loss, but not for Scott Garibay. When I get a non-retribution queen loss, I lock in like nobody's business, right? And I play much, much better chess than most players do. In fact, when I get a non-retribution queen loss, my opponents often relax and they think they're playing the same Scott Garibay they played before and they're not. I play way, way, way better after a non-retribution queen loss than I do if I haven't suffered a non-retribution queen queen loss. I wish this weren't true. I hate this that this is a fact about me, but I also know, and I never, ever, ever do it on purpose. It's just you can't do it. It's it's too much of a loss. But when I have a when I suffer a non-retribution queen loss in chess, I absolutely lock in and I become a terror as an as an opponent, right? And actually, Andrew might be in the same boat. Right? He might be exactly in the same boat as me, right? That he is a non-retribution queen loss terror, right? That he actually plays the game better when his back is to the wall. 
Uh, it's not super great to find this out, but if you know it, you can deal with it, and you can you you need to be self-aware in order to fix problems. Like some of the worst problems humans can have is problems they're not self-aware of. Okay, so Andrew's got to figure this out. Is he a non-retribution queen terror? All right, all right. So Scott Garibay is. I figured out myself. I figured that out about myself. A three-point player. All right, all right. So I'm a three-point player. And what that means is, um, basically, uh, if I get up, I don't care about pawn losses, okay? Um, oh, by the way, if, if he finds out he's a non-retribution queen terror, he, he will play the game different. He will take different moves politically. That's why that's important. All right, let's talk about three-point player. I'm a three-point player, right? Uh, if, if I get up by a bishop or a knight, okay, if I have taken... My opponent's knight or bishop, and they and, it, and it's a non-retribution knight or bishop win. I've taken theirs, and they don't have one of mine. I'm up by one principal piece by a bishop or a knight. I will trade pieces like nuts, right? And uh, so that's important, right? I will trade pieces very, very swiftly. And Andrew's got to do the same thing. He's got to figure. He's got to decide if he's a three-point player or not. I am not a tactical, strategical. Uh, chess player. What I do is I do what I can to get up by one bishop or one knight, which is easier than winning somebody's queen, and it's easier than winning somebody's rook, okay? Because those are five and nine point pieces, right? So basically, what you got to do is you have to determine if you're, a three, if you're going to be a three-point player. If you're a three-point player, you get up by a bishop or a knight, and then you trade, 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 right? That is a very specific approach in politics, right? You're going to, and, and the trades are going to be different. It'll be determined by Andrew what the trades will be, right? But essentially, once you get in, and, and this is a completely way, different way of playing the game. And actually, I do think Andrew is a three-point player. He is not unfolding intricate plans that he's made, right? I don't do intricate plans in, in chess. What I do is I will get I will get up on you by three points, and then I will trade the heck out of you, and I'll beat you in the most simple game possible. And, and that just by endurance and by staying in the game and keeping the complexity low, right? I think... Andrew Yang is a three-point player, and I think he should he should either decide if he's going to be a three-point player or not, and then adjust his political strategy appropriately, right? Now, it, like, every single thing I say today, it's like a two-day discussion with his 70-person team, right? And that's what he has now that he has $10 million. He has a 70-person team, and they will determine what is the difference between being a three-point player and being a tactics and strategy unfolding plan player. They are very different approaches and there are absolutely approaches in politics. Okay, well, Let's talk about a boule. A boule is a Dungeons and Dragons monster. It is a heavily scaled subterranean creature. Okay, Now, I am a blitz player. Right? That means I play I play five, I play a specific timed game of, pl of chess. Okay, I play it all the time and I get five minutes and my opponent gets five minutes. That's blitz chess, okay? Now, a boule player, okay, they get one minute each, one minute each, right? I'm not a boule player. You need to be ridiculously good at chess to be a boule player. Now, here's the problem, okay? The game, the 2020 US presidential primary uh, Democrat race right now, it is blitz chess, right? Trust me, none of these none of these opponents are super super fast, right? Well, actually, we're gonna get there. There might be one or two. The vast majority of everybody on the stage that you're gonna see on the stage on the October fifteenth, Ohio, CNN, uh, New York Times debate four, they're all blitz players, and, and and there might be one or two boule players. That's what we're talking about right now. Okay. Now here's the thing, I play blitz chess, right? And every now and then, and, and I go against blitz players, and what will happen is. We use time as a resource, right? And against a blitz player, I can do that. I can use time as a resource. If I have a full minute more than you do, I can destroy you, right? Because I can take my time, and you're rushed, and you're you're planning, uh, you know, like really, really on a rush. But I'm taking my time. I'm thinking through my moves, right? If I get a minute's time, I have a minute more than you do because you've been moving slower than me, I'll crush you, right? And I can do that to a blitz player. Here's the problem. Every now and then, 
boule players come over into the blitz arena. They are crazy difficult to beat, to, to, to be, right? They're incredibly difficult to beat. Here's why, okay? So a blitz player rolls in, and then I'll, I'll, I'll hard time them, right? So basically, I will play against them in a way where I'm using time against them, right? But if I'm playing a boule player, right, a player who's used to playing one-minute games, I'm not kidding. Five seconds is a minute for a blue boule player. And so my my hard timing something somebody, my pressing them by using my time as a resource utterly fails because I realize, oh crap, I am playing a boule player. And they'll be kicking off moves that literally take a half a second, a tenth of a second. I'm like, holy cows, man, this is not good, right? Here's what Andrew Yang's got to figure out, right? So that we already know. Andrew Yang is as smart as he is. He is not a boule player, right? He can't be, and the reason why is he's new to politics. But there may be some boule players in the pool that will be there, standing on that stage. And he doesn't need to. And Andrew doesn't need to worry about this now. He needs to worry about this right before the convention. And he needs to be aware: is there going to be a candidate who's incredibly good at boule chess, who's going to be able to kick off moves? like three a day when you get to convention time. And he's got to deal with those people differently, and his team needs different plans to deal with them. Boule players. So Andrew Yang has got to identify boule players in politics and among his opponents, specifically among the opponents that you are going to see on October 15th, CNN, NYT, uh, debate four night, right? Now here's here's the kicker. If, if it ain't on that stage, they don't matter, right? I'll tell you that right now. By the way, you can ignore Tom Steyer. He's, he's worthless. That guy ain't going nowhere. He is not going to do anything, right? So you can take him off the chart now, right? All right, let's keep it moving. All right, so Boule players. All right, uh, the, uh, the Winklevosses, twins. Our twin games. All right, I play Blitz chess. I play Blitz chess all the time, okay? Now, I come in, I, I sit down at the table, and uh, my opponent and, I, and, and my opponent squares off against me, and often they'll say, okay, listen, I'm going to play you this blitz game, but I'm going to play another game right here against this other opponent. Now, where I play, this is perfectly acceptable. You're absolutely allowed to do this, okay? You can play, you can play twin games. You can play two games at once. One opponent, one, you know, one chess player can play two people uh, at the simultaneously playing two opponents, right? This happens to me all the time where I play, all the time. In fact, I would say it's about two thirds or three quarters, right? Now, I have learned to play twin game players, right? Now, this is a huge advantage for Andrew Yang that he needs to acknowledge and begin to leverage, right? So here's the thing Andrew Yang is all in. He is a single game player. I'm a single game player. I absolutely never play multiple opponents at the same time. Uh, I won. I think it's arrogant. I really. I think it's arrogant. And I think it's foolish. And I'll tell you right now. I know for a fact that um, that defeating twin game players is super easy, right? Because their focus is split, right? Now they can get away with this against chump players. I'm not a chump player, right? Uh, and I and and they roll up against me like this ones that don't know me right and they're like I'm gonna play you and I'm gonna play this person too right now here's the thing uh, Andrew Yang is a single game player he does not play multiple so basically he's gonna beat people one on one one on one right and and the reality is uh, the reality is I don't think Andrew Yang is really playing against anybody but Elizabeth Warren right now right every just like I said I I predicted that every single politician would fold under their own weight, right? And that is absolutely happening. You could see that happening now, right? Um, and But except for Warren, she ain't folding at all, right? That She is rigid, right? Like she is not folding, right? And uh, so he is playing against her. Now, the nice thing is uh, Sanders, Biden, Warren, Tulsi, all of them, they're all politicians and they are exactly the type of twin game players. So Biden's a perfect example of this, right? Andrew Yang is all in on the 2020 U.S. presidential primary uh, race, right? Biden is not all in. He's playing multiple games, right? He is playing to win the presidency. Another thing he's doing is he's playing to preserve his legacy, 
right? So, uh, so Joe Biden, right? Unlike Andrew Yang, he right now he is he is a footnote in history. He is a footnote in history, right? He hasn't he hasn't earned like chapters in the, in the annals of history yet, right? But Joe Biden has. Joe Biden will never be forgotten in American history, right? He was there when the first African American president rocked the presidency and did great things for this nation. And Joe Biden's name will be forever linked to Barack Obama, okay? Uh, and Joe Biden has a legacy, and he needs to protect that legacy. And it is a game he is playing, right? When he goes out and he tells stories like Corn Pop, he is wrecking his legacy, right? Yeah, that is a serious problem. He is quite aware of it, and it is taking his focus. It is taking his focus, right? He's playing multiple games at one time, right? And so Andrew Yang needs to, to recognize this. He needs to recognize the players that are playing multiple games and the, and do what I do, right? When I play a player uh, who is playing multiple games, what I'll do is they'll be like, bing, 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 move, 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 right? And so I'll go move, 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 move with them. And th that's how I'll play a normal player. Somebody who's playing one-on-one -on -one with me. But this is how I'll play a, a twin game player. I'll play move, 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 and then I'll go move, click, 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 right? And I'll let it wait. And I'll literally burn like 30 seconds, a minute, even a minute and a half of my own time. And my opponent's like waiting for me, waiting for me. And they keep, and they're in the rhythm, right? They're like, move against this opponent, move against this opponent, move against this opponent, move against this opponent. But when they're, when they are at, move against this opponent, stall. Move against this opponent, stall. Move against this opponent, stall. It, it, it disrupts their cadence, right? And that's what Andrew Yang's got to figure out is who's playing two games at once. What are the games they're playing? How do you disrupt their cadence, right? It's very, very, very important. So that that is a very real thing, and it is uh, and it's important for him to absolutely lock in, right? All right. So um, we talked about the queen. Uh, we talked about uh, three point. We talked about the Winklevosses. We talked about Boule, right? Fork. All right. Um, there is a king rook fork, and a king rook fork is a very obscure move. You can move your knight up and fork the king and the rook, right? And usually when you take, and basically you move your your your, uh, your knight into position directly above, right? You move your knight into, into position directly above the, um, basically you move your knight into position directly above, usually it's the bishop, right? And what happens is you, you check the king and then the person has to move their king, but they can't move their king close enough to the rook to stop what's about to happen. And what will happen is that the rook, right, you'll be able to take your rook with the knight. And because the knight is there and there's a bishop there, it's almost always a non-retribution take, right? So so you're going to it's going to be a non-retribution rook take with your knight. This is exactly what Andrew Yang is very, very, very much queued up to do against almost every opponent he has in the 2020 U.S. presidential primary Democrat race. It's a very weird, obscure move, and he can do it because he is a weird, obscure opponent. He is not a politician. Tulsi doesn't know how to go against him. Biden doesn't know how to go against him. Elizabeth Warren doesn't know how to get, uh, go against him because they've never faced an opponent like him. Because there is no opponent like him. There is no uh, double Ivy League, uh, mic drop success corporate champions who have crushed it in the world of benevolence. There is nothing like Andrew Yang on the planet. And he is perfectly positioned to king, rook, fork every opponent, right? And he should be ready to do it. Now, everything I said, there's a whole bunch of unpacking that Andrew Yang's team needs to do. Right, And I really think it's worth every minute if they do it and figure out how they adjust their plans based on what I talk about, I what, based on what I talked about today. I really appreciate you letting me share these ideas with you today. If you are a chess player, let me know what you think on these ideas because I know this is deep in the woods for pretty much for chess players only. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.